Tales from My D&D Campaign. Previously, using Angel's Detect Thoughts impressions, combined with daily castings of Lay of the Land, the party finds the ruins of Kuraj, and from there, one massive scorpion later, they uncover what they believe to be the source of the strange Ataran relic being sought by Del, and the other orcs he is manipulating. What lies beyond the door does resemble the small metal room the archaeologists had supposedly found, but the door to the room is out of position, with the floor up at an angle, leaving a sizable gap between the end of the hallway and the small metal chamber, a gap which opens into a wider dark space below. What the heck? I activate my slippers of spider climb and go underneath. Boy, you are f***ing creepy. In your dark vision, you see that the large space is about 60 feet wide, with a flat floor 40 feet down, and maybe 100 feet long. From underneath, the small metal room has weird equipment on the bottom, and actually looks to be a structure separate from the larger cavern. Currently, it almost looks like it's been forced, pushed out of the way, creating the gap that allowed you into the big room. Is the cavern all metal? No, other than the entrance tunnel you are in, most of the walls are bare stone, but it's not a natural cavern. It's regular, like it was delved somehow. You want to come down here? Like, fly? You haven't died yet, so... okay. Seeing didn't make the place any less mysterious, though. There were some kind of metal lines or tracks leading from the metal room along the ceiling down the far wall, and at the bottom of that wall, long straight tunnels led off to both the north and south. What's more, there's a pile of sand partway up the east wall, fanning out across the floor from a 20 foot diameter hole. 20 feet? That's a big hole! So something huge broke into here, and wrecked the metal room thing? I want to search around, see what I can find. Well, the sand is covering a large chunk of the floor, and it looks like this big space was mostly empty, or else has been stripped bare. You find that there was definitely some kind of equipment, machinery, in one corner of the space, but it appears to have been crushed almost literally flat, then covered in this mass of sand. Dough. All that is pretty obvious, but with your search check, you note that you can hardly see any of the stone from the wall amidst the sand, and you realize if something broke in, causing that massive hole, the rock should be scattered all over, whether it would be large, hard-to-miss chunks or a shotgun spread of crushed gravel. Either way, you aren't seeing it. So, I, I don't get it. Did, did something break into here, and then what, pushed the metal thing out of the way and left up the ramp? Could it be one of those spirit things? Dark ancients? We haven't seen one for a while. Or was it the scorpion? Or maybe not the same one, but one of those. That scorpion was so large, it might be able to squeeze through a hole that size, but it would have been a tight squeeze, and not, you know, smashing its way through. Because that damage would look a lot different. It also seems very unlikely that anything that would smash a 20-foot hole could make its way up the winding ramps where you came in. Realizing that the archaeologists who found this site had only seen the interior of the small metal chamber, Draven flies back up to check it out more thoroughly. The metal room is full of equipment, but someone or something had bashed in the panels, the controls. He could see the spot where this rod had been removed from some sort of power regulation control. Unlike the flattened stuff down below, there was plenty left to study, maybe some of it repairable, but in the short term, it had been rendered quite non-functional. After examining the whole area, the odd metal room, the tracks along the ceiling and wall, and peering down the very long dark tunnel that intersected the space, they began to solidify some theories. It looks like this is a mobile room. It, it could move from the ground up to the entrance along those rails. It would have fit down this tunnel, too. Do the tracks go down those tunnels? No, but there are a pair of grooves in the floor. Very shallow grooves, less than an inch deep. What was the purpose of this place? Mora has knowledge engineering. Why? Who cares? I'll assist her. There's some equipment on the bottom of the movable room, which looks like it would sort of line up with the grooves in the tunnel, though they really aren't deep enough. They wouldn't hold it like rails unless it was going very slow or running with an insane degree of mechanical precision. And this passage looks to be a fairly precise north-south axis. Could I get this thing running? 
or maybe assemble something using the junk. The junk in the larger space is beyond any help. The machinery up there is still machinery. It may not be beyond repair, though your first impression is that you'd need a fair bit of time and probably more equipment to work with, more parts to replace some of the damaged stuff. Well, I'm at a loss until we find something to kill. They decide to explore the south tunnel. The walls and floor are smooth, delved not with elite dwarven quality craftsmanship, nor was the space disintegrated with perfect magical precision, but still, it's clearly engineered to be very straight and level. Impressively so, as the dark windowless hall stretches further and further beneath the desert. What about the horse? She can't come down the way you did, that's for sure. Can you shrink her? Like, that spell. The opposite of enlarge. The spell is enlarge person, and like it, reduce person only works on humanoids. Is there a druid spell for shrinking animals? Actually, what does Rainbow Dash count as? Uh, she's pretty much an animal. Really? That's not a magical beast? Well, let's just say, if you find a shrink animal spell, I think it should work. Here we go. Reduce animal. Druid level 2 shrinks... Hmm. One size category. Really? Because I thought druids had an animal growth spell that could do two size categories. Even at large, she could technically squeeze into the hallway, but it's really not practical to get her down all those winding ramps. We could dig down through the big hole. It's all sand, right? It is, but even the top of the room is 60 feet down. Also, sand would fill in anything you dig out. You guys would be here a very long time. Unfortunately, they had to leave Rainbow Dash behind. She didn't fit down the ramps, and they weren't planning to go too far, so Draven preferred not to spend any of his XP to emulate a big enough spell to get her down. They'd be back for her. But this tunnel isn't just a path to another room. It stretches on and on, straight and virtually featureless as they march for, like, an hour, their footsteps and the clink of armor echoing seemingly to infinity. <sighs> Anyone mind if I just flood this tunnel? Water. Actually, cast some water. See if it's really level. Okay. Water. The fluid spreads out about as close to evenly as you're gonna get. It isn't, like perfect, but it's even enough that the tunnels clearly level to a fairly high degree of precision. So this is a serious tunnel. You could swear you just heard something way down there, though the way things echo in here, it could be hours away, or you might just be hearing things. Forget this, I'm going scouting. I'll have Mora cast invisibility on me and get Expeditious Retreat going. So I move at speed 70. Speed 70? So you double move like 140 feet per round? Faster than that if she runs. If you aren't defending yourself, just running headlong in a straight line, you get four times your speed, or three times in heavy armor. 280 feet, that's about 85 meters. That's 14 meters per second times 60, 840 meters per minute. Almost 50 kilometers per hour. Yeah, over 51 kilometers an hour. Invisible. On the ceiling if she wants. Ugh, breaks my brain. Ever have one of those moments where you realize that if this were Alien versus Predator, you guys wouldn't necessarily be on the same faction? <laughs> Her spells don't last for an hour, and even if they did, she likely couldn't keep up the four times speed run for that long. But the Gnome Assassin dashes about a kilometer a minute. She covers about five miles in the ten minute duration of the two spells. When you stop, you do hear something. It's much closer, like percentage-wise, though it's still hard to judge because of the echoing. I rolled over 30. I think I made the listen check. It's sort of like soft footfalls, but almost more like someone wading quietly through shallow water. Sounds like there's more than one. You'd guess minimum three of them. It's not even as loud as the others walking behind you. Their armored footsteps must travel for miles. Even if we lead Black and Mora around in the dark so we aren't seen, anyone down there will hear us coming. I could cast Silence. Would that block sound from behind you too? I don't know. I think it should, if the spell blocks the entire volume of the space, which in this case the 20 foot radius easily would. If there was any gap around the corners or something though, the sound would just go around it. Tell you what, I'll cast silence on a stone where we are, so Angel up ahead can still hear. I'm pretty quiet. They won't hear me coming. I'll recast Invisibility and Expeditious Retreat. 
So you're recasting the spells, are you going the full distance till the invis runs out again? Or halfway then back? Assuming you don't find anything. Three quarters. That way, I still have time to get back to safety if needed. That's a good margin. She goes nowhere near that far though, before Angel spots three figures at the edge of her dark vision, roughly humanoid figures with thick limbs, all made of stone, but mostly featureless. The reason they aren't making much noise is that they aren't walking on the floor, rather, their feet are sort of gliding through the rock. You're pretty sure they had been coming toward you when you heard them before, but they are moving away now. See and Viz? What the hell? Well, it doesn't look like they're reacting to Angel's movements, though perhaps they heard the rest of you before you laid down a silence spell. Angel creeps along, following the rockmen from 60 feet back, and they do seem oblivious to her. It takes many minutes for the others to catch up, even with Little One in Black taking their armor off so they can full on run for a while, since the hall had been scouted and Draven's silence spell hid their noise. Draven catches up first with his fly speed, but the tanks haven't caught up yet when they see the stone things turn and move sideways and downwards through the wall and floor at a certain point in the hall. Uh, we're gonna stop now. You should move back towards us. But we need to know where they disappeared. This whole place looks the same. Leave some kind of marker. I leave a dagger. They all meet up. Black puts down his pack and armors up, while little one's like, Bing! Mine's faster. Yours is cooler. I'll search for secret doors. They don't need doors. They go through the ground. Yeah, but maybe they aren't alone. Maybe they work for someone who does need a door. When she doesn't find one, she uses her Whisper Gnome racial ability to recast their silence spell, and Little One goes to work on the marked wall section, using Elder Mountain Hammer to deal a massive hardness bypassing strike. And even with all that force, it takes a while. Each time he uses the maneuver, he has to spend the next round recharging it, during which he can only attack normally. Focusing G, focusing G, SMASH! The going was really slow, because the stone of the tunnel wall seemed to have been improved in some fashion, hardened. But after breaking through about 6 inches of that, he reaches normal rock, and progress becomes faster. After about 2 minutes, he breaks through enough that they can see the crack opening onto a void, a dark space beyond, and from there they can make out an indirect reddish glow. You're still going to have to widen the gap considerably to get even Angel through. Actually, I could cast Stone Shape to make a tunnel. It shapes 10 cubic feet plus 1 per level. Yep, that can easily make a tunnel large enough for Black and the rest of you to get through. Magic saves the day again. After he works like a slave for two minutes, the passage opens up into a series of narrow, winding, natural caves, full of cracks and dead ends. They're basically spelunking now. I rolled a 20. Can I keep that? Rolled a 20 for what? Uh, I don't know. Tell you what, you can use it for anything that happens in the next round. So, time passes. Aww. I'm worried that elementals are going to be attacking out of everywhere. Were we supposed to cut through the wall? You weren't supposed to do anything. Just wondering if you planned for it. But they don't get ambushed by Earth elementals, at least not right now. The rough little caverns are difficult terrain, but thanks to one of her Sword Sage stances, Angel scouts through easily. It doesn't cost her double movement or anything. She can try to point out easier paths for the rest of you, but you're like, No you idiot, we can't loop to loop over the ceiling! But you avoid all the rocks! Whee! Soon, though, they discover a wide open cavern where it would be easier to move around other than a small stream of water flowing in from a gap in a long tunnel. So we didn't need to break through the wall. <laughs> How deep is the water? The stream flowing in is pretty shallow. I guess water. Well, as you come through to this room here, there are actually a whole bunch of guys waiting for you. Waiting for us? They're actually very quiet if they stand still. There were gangs of rock guys and also humanoid fire guys who were providing that red glow they'd seen from the tunnel. And behind them, a pair of goo men, very much like the one they saw in Hengal. I just realized, we were looking for power systems or machinery or something, and we jumped at the first natural cavern we saw. There were guys. Watch, these guys will have nothing to do with anything at all that we're involved in. Guys made of fire, huh? Water. You know it. Weren't expecting to find we'd been beaten there. Was it you who took down the defenses? Us? Who else would we be talking to? These guys? We totally didn't do it. A likely story. Why are we talking to Goo? I don't know. Did I hit my head on that wall? Do you protect that Eterran facility? No, that thing's been keeping us out for ages. We just found out the defenses are down. I guess we're going to get there and everything's been taken. There's nothing in there. Isn't that always the way? 
What was in there? I don't know. It's an Atarn facility. There must be something there. Why are we having a conversation with them? Jesus, I don't know, buddy. We're having the same f***ing question here. Maybe they have some stuff. Save me the skin. I think that's the roll initiative line. They're all the way back there talking shit? Yeah, a lot easier to talk shit from the back. That's Draven. Ooh. Cold. Thing is, they have so many minion types, and that's why I got this wand of fireball. It should still hurt the rock guys. Everything burns, except things that are already burning. The fire guys definitely burn. They're burning right now. And one's charging black. I'm gonna get burned it. Wait, the fire guy is charging? I thought they'd hang back, fly, and range. Nah, if they wanted to do that, they'd have a higher ceiling. Oh yeah, what was I thinking? No, things don't always work that way. But he is charging. Scumbag GM. A bunch of fire minions charge. One misses Black, who responds by killing it with an attack from his Counter-Strike Bracers. The next one hits him for 16, of which he resists 7 points of physical damage with his Greater Iron Ward Crystal, because that DR is being boosted by the Ring of Sloth he got in the Shadowfell. However, he's still lit on fire for 1d4 rounds. Because it's a reflex save even though he actually has a respectable plus 8 bonus ever since he bought that Cloak of Resistance. One hits Little One for 15, minus 3 for his medium quality Iron Ward Crystal, and he's lit on fire too. If you want 22 gallons of water... <laughs> Little One kills a fire guy, Mora hastes the party, and Angel destroys one of the Earth Elemental guys with her crossbow of force before moving to a better position. Dead fire guys basically just dissipate into the air, but the earth minion dropped by Angel's shot cracks open and a molten core oozes out, turning his square on the battlefield into a patch of magma. After Black acts, destroying a couple more fire minions, the earth ones get to go, most of them phasing into the walls or ground and out of sight. Well that's comforting. Little One tumbles through the water, extinguishing his burning clothes, then he uses his ballista throw maneuver to toss a fire minion through a bunch of the other minions in a line. Throwing a fire guy? You'll take another 2d6 damage. Yeah, yeah. The whole time I'm doing this, I keep my eyes focused on those goo guys. So while he coldly stares down the real enemies, the collision deals 14 damage in a line, killing every minion along the path, and Little One gets lit on fire again. Then we process that magma square, which does 2d6 damage in a 10 foot radius, 1d6 in a 20 foot radius. That much? It's super hot. It's almost like a mini wall of fire. Wait, if I throw one of the fire guys, does it do an extra 2d6 to everything it hits? Um, sure. Actually, if I throw one of the rock guys, he'll break into magma. It'd be like a mini fireball. Ugh, they're tearing up all our guys. This is like a waste of time. Ugh! It puffs up and shoots a barrage of rigid spikes at Little One. Alright, I leaping flame right up to him. Hmm, I'm uh, trying to figure out how it works. He does six ranged attacks, but they're all simultaneous. He's based off of Manticore's stats. Normally your counter maneuver would teleport you after the first attack, but they're at the same time. I'm gonna say you get hit by up to half of them. Sure. After three attack rolls, two of the razor-like goo shards hit, dealing 9 and 12 damage respectively, each reduced a little by his armor crystal. But the rest of the volley flies through empty space where Little One had been, while he discorporates into fire, streaking across the distance to reappear right in front of the goo man's face. By this point, there's only one fire minion left, and only one rock minion on the battlefield, not counting the two pools of magma, though two or three of the earth elementals are lurking behind the walls. Overall, the party has just been crushing the minions. And now it's Draven's turn. Kill Steel! Maybe a little early for that. Have we even hurt the goo guys? No. It's kind of a waste while I'm hasted, but without any other buffs on my crossbow, I'm just going to wand. Ugh, that's a terrible roll. Still hits. It is a touch attack, and he is a large creature. A large pile of poop. Take 39 damage from Orb of Force. Like the other goo guy you fought, they have their special goo defense, so he takes minus 2 damage per die. Per die? Per die? It's going to take 20 less damage? Should've used Fire Orb, at least it's D8s. He's a non-Newtonian fluid. The rock minion moves to flank Little One, but just barely misses due to the fact that his Warblade training makes him immune to flanking. Angel sets up in a defensive position to shred anyone who passes through her spike chain's reach. Mora shoots a goo man with her crossbow of force. 
the damage is not huge, but it also doesn't suffer that badly from the per die ablative goo reduction, which notably has a minimum of one per die. The speed bonus from haste doesn't stack with the bonus from Black's boots, but it's enough to let him move across the room and still attack the goo man, which is important because he can't make a proper straight line charge due to that magma, which would not only hurt a lot, but which is super ultra difficult terrain, taking four squares of movement to pass through. He takes four fire damage just from passing near it, but the rock minion's attack of opportunity misses. Nobody misses Black. Your hits just don't do anything. Alright, I hit AC... Oh, f off. Yeah, f off misses. Not giving up, Black activates his belt of battle, blowing all the daily charges for another whole turn effectively. He casts Knight's move to teleport into flanking position and scores a critical hit. Wait, is it possible to crit these things? Yep, they're actually not immune to crits. They're totally made of goo, but part of their goo is vital to them. Then I do 32, plus, uh, plus 13 from my ring of bonus damage on crits. And because the crit doubles the flat bonuses, their minus two BS barely helps them. Yep, yeah, he's bloodied now. Or gooeyed. Gooeyed. Do something, would you? This is starting to suck! I'm working on it! The second goo man, who may or may not be female, goo person, is casting Wall of Magma. Whoa. Wow. It doesn't actually do 20d6. But it's casting it right through me? Uh... Damn. No, apparently this wall can't be dropped on people. Okay, it's not that dangerous then. Only 1d6 or 2d6 fire, like the dead rock guys. But crossing it takes 4 squares of movement and deals 5d6 plus caster level and lights you on fire. Well, I'm gonna burning blade this guy right in the eye. Careful, those eyes are valuable. Little one rolls his full attack, hitting multiple times with a large fire damage buff on each hit except... Oh, whoops, uh, he has fire resistance 20. Now they cast mass resist fire before you guys came in, because it would be stupid otherwise. Would I have known they were resisting? Um, well, they're next to all the magma and stuff, yeah, you could tell they weren't taking heat damage. You can not waste the maneuver if you want. Since he had already rolled the attacks, it would be awkward to take them back, so he took back the use of the maneuver, but in its place, he used the Warblade recovery method. As long as he makes an attack and does not use any maneuvers, he can recover all his used ones. In this case, his Leaping Flame counter move. And even without the fire, he still inflicted a good 20 damage to the Goo Man which bursts out the old goo wings, exposing himself to multiple attacks of opportunity to try and retreat to a safer position. I've been thinking about it, and despite the minus twos, I think Orb of Force is still my best attack for this. What? A one? You accidentally force Orb Black. Force Orb him into the lava. 10d6 damage, then bacon the 5d6 plus 9 fire damage, and... Just kidding. We all know by now, I don't like extra punishing fumbles on ones, it's generally just a miss. Wasting a wand charge is bad enough. And then... SOLID FOG! A powerful vision blocking effect, like most of the cloud spells, Solid Fog also slows physical movement to a crawl and stops ranged attacks dead if they pass through more than 5 feet of it. That in a magma wall is gonna be a pain in the ass. It's a pain in my ass, I'm practically right on it. I'm thinking of Earth Reavering the area. I know about where they are, and it would hit a big area, ignoring the fog. Do you have Dispel? Hmm. Laura's gonna Dimension Door me over next to them. Have I got a treat for you! She full attacks and hits multiple times, while Black and Little One continue to take burning damage from being lit on fire earlier, which they haven't taken the time to put out, plus damage from the magma patches, all of which is starting to add up. You know, I could throw you. It would get you in there, and if you hit both of them, it'd be worth the damage it would deal to you. Go ahead. I don't even care. I've got lots of HP. The fog would stop him after 5 to 10 feet. Why? He has a lot more mass than a crossbow bolt. Actually, it's so thick that it even negates falling damage. If you fall into it, you get slowed to a stop. Well then, I'm casting Dispel on the area. You successfully dispelled the solid fog, but the magma wall remains. You've got the fog cloud, that's all that matters. You still want me to ballista throw you? You know what? I don't care. It'd be funny as hell. Well, since you've got rid of the fog cloud, one of the rock minions is gonna pop out and try to bull rush little one into the magma. Bring it! Ah, he technically wins, but not by much, so only pushes you five feet, making it totally pointless. Another one tries on black, <laughs> gets stopped dead. Now that he has an enemy in range, little one throws the rock guy instead of black, or 
tries to, but he rolls a 1, which was about the only way he could miss the touch attack, the easiest part of the whole process. Angel dodges an elemental attacking from within the wall, but the wounded Goo Man hits her with a barrage of spines for 24 damage before Draven dumps a third orb of force into it, finishing the gelatinous monster. So now it's the Goo Spellcaster's turn. She's not in a very good running away position. That's why I moved here. She hits Angel with a Stingray, which effectively slows her. Black and Little One suffer the last round of burning damage from the long-dead fire minions, but then Mora dispels the Stingray, allowing Angel to full attack as normal, starting to really wear down the remaining goo person. Black follows that up with a Bolt of Glory, dealing another 25 damage, but then a rock minion bull rushes him, this time pushing Black into the magma. They did something useful! I rolled really bad for the magma though, so you only take 20! On your turn, you'll want to get off that. I guess I could just crossbow two of them. Then they would stop pushing people into lava. Miss... Miss... Another one? You should just focus on kill stealing, you big guys. He wasn't really aiming, he was like, Let's try out the auto fire feature! The Goo Caster exposes itself to an attack from Angel, taking another 14 damage as it tries to get some distance from the party before casting Haboob. A boob? I have never heard of that spell. I'm assuming it sounds really badass in Arabic. It's a cloud spell from Sandstorm. Take a whole 8 sand damage, reflex save for half. But the save is only because you dropped it right on you. In future rounds, there's no save if you enter or move through it. It has all the regular cloud visibility issues. This one doesn't affect movement. Mora casts another area to spell, this time finally getting rid of the magma wall. The couple remaining rock guys get in some solid hits for double digit damage. It turns out they're surprisingly dangerous for minions if they can get through the party's high armor class. Even in dying, being felled by counterattacks, throws, etc., they turn into magma patches, replacing the original patches which had finally cooled enough to stop causing damage. But Angel hits the caster again, and Black beats on the monster which is now bloodied, gooeyed. Kill steal! I don't think I can kill it in one round from bloodied. He crossbows it for a little damage, then the caster takes a Hail Mary shot at Draven with its ranged attack. What?! This is like the first time you've been attacked in about three fights. I don't get your point. She... misses. All of them. She's supposed to have a decent chance by virtue of making six attacks, but she didn't have the rolls. And Angel, using the last daily charge from her Heartseeker amulet to virtually guarantee a hit, finally finishes her off. <coughs> you managed to steal Draven's kill steal. After the last of the magma cools, there's nothing left but a couple piles of goo and a lot of scorch marks and melted stone. There's not a lot of loot, but they harvest an eldritch eye from each of the goo abominations, and one of the goo people had a scroll case. The case was lacking in spell scrolls, but contained a message written in draconic. Remember, with the wards down, the maintenance station will be defended savagely by Warforged and other constructs. You must act quickly to secure the tunneling machine so they cannot use it to collapse the North Tunnel, and I want any other machinery there intact. If we have a working carriage, we may be able to bypass the wards of the Northern Terminus. Okay, there is way too much f***ing information. First, did we head north out of that place? No, you went south. Okay, because south is where there's more civilization, so that was my logic. Is there any map on this thing at all? No, though if they were talking about that place where you came from, all they'd have to do is follow the tunnel. A uh, map would be fairly superfluous. Bypass the wards in the northern terminus. I mean, this almost sounds like a subway. Yeah. The question is, do we go further south looking for another station, maybe find a working carriage to head north, or do we go back where we were, see if we can get that carriage working to get past the wards, or do we say it and just head north the hard way and deal with any wards when we reach them. Or you could just leave all this, because there's all kinds of other stuff you could be doing too. I'm down with finding out what's going on here. So where do we go? North is where they wanted to go. I want to see where these guys came from, and if anything else is coming. All this stuff and the note, I don't know. You guys make a choice, wherever we go, I'll kill what we find. They choose to keep exploring the natural tunnels for now. The path appears to wind on for a ways, though there's a crack in the wall, a rock formation creating a gap too narrow for even Angel to squeeze through between two sheer rock surfaces. This is not really a followable tunnel. There must be treasure! Let's go! It looks very geological, like it's been there a long time. He put it there, so there are two options. One, he's a dick. 
two, he's a dick. As you go around this corner, you get attacked by stone guys from the walls. Well, finally, something I understand. Understand? Yes. Enjoy? No. They had easily killed similar numbers of rock minions with literal fire support and dangerous leaders, but in a narrow tunnel, it was an entirely different story. Not only could they hide half in the walls for cover, but with many heroes in reach, they had no need to move around, and all of them were able to take advantage of their two hard-hitting attacks per round, while their overlapping reach meant anyone moving would eat multiple attacks of opportunity. Little One managed to tumble over and throw one of them, causing it to smash through the other minions on that side, but the party had taken a ton of damage, and after mopping up the other side, they had to retreat from all the overlapping heat radii of the molten corpses. Well, that was a lot of fun. You guys want to go further in? For all we know, there could be an infinite number of these. We should go back to my original logic. Logic? What is our original logic? Who knows? Logic to me dictates, wherever there's resistance, there's a goal. While they assess their healing resources, which are actually pretty good because Draven always makes sure they have a cost-efficient wand of cure light wounds now, Draven himself actually decided to scout ahead. He had already cast Invisibility to get out of the death zone, and he was hoping that, plus flying off the ground to avoid any kind of tremor sense, would allow him to check ahead relatively safely. And also he'd taken by far the least damage out of anyone. As he glided forward, there was a faint subsonic rumble, very low frequency, more felt than heard. The tunnel curved, and for a while the left wall fell away as the passage intersected a deep chasm with the dim glow of magma far, far below. The tunnel becomes fully enclosed again, veering away from that chasm, slopes down for a bit, then dives abruptly, becoming a long volcanic shaft. A shaft? There's no sign of lava at the bottom. Is it hewn? No, looks pretty natural. Alright, I'm gonna book it. Having tracked his time carefully, Draven gets back to the others right about as his invisibility spell expires. I'm okay with leaving this place, because these aren't parts I'm interested in exploring. I'm fine with leaving. So's Mora. Mora's extra fine with leaving this place. Hot, dry, then getting punched extra hard, and they try to burn her. She's normally fairly cheery. Well, not really cheery, but upbeat, trying to keep everyone's morale up. But she's been sounding pretty dour since the last battle. I'm sensing immediate danger, and no immediate sign of reward. Should I wheel her woe? Sure, couldn't hurt. But there's a die roll to it, and despite an 80% chance, it fails. Fortunately, Augury is safe, in that it does simply fail, rather than providing bad information. Sirius doesn't know anything about this area, apparently. Or she's too busy to answer. But without divining any reason to go further, having decided that this is not the way of the future, they find themselves staring back into the seemingly endless Ataran Tunnel. Unless you guys have other ideas, the two obvious choices are to continue further south, or turn back north to the maintenance station you came from, the place they wanted to reach. I think we should go back and continue north beyond that. That's where these guys wanted to go. There must be something down there. Again, you guys pick a direction, and when you find something, I'll kill it. Next time on Tales from My D&D Campaign. How far down is it? The cavern's 60 feet high, so from the floor of your entrance tunnel, it'd be 50 feet. So what, 5d6 damage? I can take that. Actually, if you're jumping down intentionally, that reduces the effective distance by 10, so it'd be 4d6. Can I make a 3-point landing? Can you make a balance check? No. You can make a faceplant landing. Wait, if he takes falling damage, can he deal his counter damage back to the ground? That'd be awesome. Remember the Scorpion's size-based DR? You have no idea the planet's DR. Aww. Also, you don't want to find out the die code for its slam attack. Don't aggro the planet.